Hi everyone, my name is Katie Wilson and I work on the museum team here at 21C Museum Hotels. And usually all of our properties offer a weekly class called Yoga with Art. And since we are all staying away from one another and can't go anywhere or do anything, we decided to bring you a virtual Yoga with Art class. So um, we have my favorite yoga teacher here. Her name is Leanne Albrechta and she is a dancer with the Louisville Ballet. So. All right. We are Let's practicing see. at a safe distance <laughs> for all of you. And also I wanted to give a shout out to 21C artist Nick Cave who designed this fantastic yoga mat. So yoga with art around us and on my mat. Awesome. <laughs> well, we'll get started. We're going to do just an all levels vinyasa flow, 45 minutes, lots of options, modifications. Um, so just sit on your mat upright. You can sit cross legged on your shins, maybe even up against the wall if that's a little bit more comfortable for you. Let your eyes close. Take a nice deep breath in through your nose. Exhale, let it go, nose or mouth. One more, full breath in. Exhale, let it go. And then just start to settle into your seat, relaxing the front of the hips. Relaxing any tension you might be holding in your legs. Allow the earth to support you to hold you up. And then send energy up through your spine, lengthening up through the crown of your head. Allowing the breath to flow easy from top to bottom. Also thinking about filling up the breath 360, from side to side, front to back. So we start to become more aware of our body. Our breath helps to hold us in the present moment. And we start to work through the layers of things that we build up through our day. Relax the muscles in the face, soften the shoulders. And then start to deepen your breath. Inhale through your nose. And exhale through your nose. Lips stay sealed. Back of the throat slightly constricted in through the nose. And out through your nose. Ujjayi Pranayama. This is the breath that you're going to hold on to for the rest of this practice. Hear your own breath, that oceanic sound, and it becomes your rhythm. Bring your hands to heart center. Setting an intention, I invite you to use the word gratitude. There's a lot we can be grateful for in these unique times, and art is one of them. Gently blink your eyes open. Sweep your arms up overhead. Take a nice big inhale as you reach up and look up. Exhale, pull your hands to heart center. The arms sweep back up. Take a nice big inhale. Reach up. Exhale, pull those hands back down. One more. Really connecting movement and breath. Sweep it up. And exhale, hands to heart center. And then just walk your hands over to the right and take a gentle twist. So heads up, we are going to be reverse of you, so really pay attention to cues from right to left, or just know to always do the opposite. Come back through center and move it over to your left, right, ringing out the spine, twisting, lengthening, breathing in, and out. Coming back up through center, this time sweep the arms up, and take your side bend over to the right, lower your right hand, maybe your right forearm. Reach that left arm up and over. Choose where your focus is most comfortable, down to the mat, up to your top arm, or even just gently in front of you towards us. Bring it back up through center and take it over to the left, opening up the right side of your body, making sure that the right hip stays heavy. 
Breathe in and breathe out. Stay for one more. Let your focus land. Inhale and exhale. Good. Bring it up to the top. Pull those hands to heart center one last time. And then move it forward into tabletop hands and knees. So we'll get moving through some cat cows. Shoulders on top of wrists, hips on top of knees. Big inhale to pull the heart forward and up. Exhale to curl the spine and tuck your tailbone. So move and breathe. Inhale and exhale. At your own pace, in any direction that you want. Yeah, you can go a little crazy and move side to side or circular. Let it feel good, not worried about what it looks like. Start to root your fingertips down. Make sure your elbows are soft. So you're not kicking into hyperextension. Let's take two more. So if you're moving from side to side or circular, make sure you even yourself out. If you're staying traditional with your cat cows, just take that last round. And then we'll take a moment back in child's pose when you're ready. And if you're still moving, that's great. Sink the hips back when you're ready. Big toes can touch, knees wide, reach forward and drop your forehead to the earth. So take a moment here to really ground on your mat and know that child pose is always the place you can come back to. Whether it's because your mind has wandered and you need to tune it back in, or whether you just need a breather, if things get a little difficult or challenging, you just come right here, settle in, regroup, and then join us when you're ready. Take one more inhale and exhale here. And then coming up back to tabletop, I want you to step your right foot back and then your left foot into a plank first. We really set up our downward facing dog. Root into your fingertips and then press your hips up and back, downward facing dog, and start to bend your right knee, bend your left knee. So a little bit of movement here in your downward facing dog. Those fingertips are gripping, for, uh, sorry, second or third finger pointing forward. Feet are hip distance apart. Your focus will land middle to back of your mat. And then again, you layer in your breath here. Your breath is what's going to allow you to hold a posture, maybe a little longer than you thought you could, to get out of the head and back into the body, connecting mind, body, and soul. Eventually moving towards stillness. And the next time you exhale, just gently walk those feet forward to the top of your mat into a rag doll. Feet go behind the wrists, knees are soft, grab opposite elbows, drop the head, drop the arms, and just hang and breathe. You may shake your head, yes and no. You can sway from side to side. We're looking to release as much tension as possible. So have the courage to really drop your head Getting yourself upside down, seeing the world from a different view. Notice what's happening to your breath. Is it still there with you even though you're upside down? Take one more inhale. Let those arms go as you exhale. And let's heel toe the feet towards each other. Not to touching, but almost. And then drop your head and arms, soften your knees, and roll up as slow as you need up to standing one for the break. At the top, the arms sweep up, big inhale. Let's right away grab the left wrist and pull up and over to your right. Nice big side stretch on the left side of the body. The hips can gently knock to the left. Bring yourself back up to the top, grab your right wrist and take it up and over to your left. And back up through center, first back bend, bring your hands to your low back, fingers point down, open up the heart chest, look up, press the pelvis gently forward and open up into your chest. Three, two, let the arms fold down by your side, just forward fold all the way down. Nice, halfway lift three times. Press hands against shins and lengthen. Exhale, fold and drop your head. Two, halfway lift, inhale, spine gets long. Exhale, fold and release. You're going for three, halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Come all the way back up to standing. This time flat back, arms reach up all the way up to the top. And exhale, fold all the way right back down. Good. Halfway lift. Inhale. Hands to the mat. Exhale. Plant the hands. Step your feet back to a plank. So really working the strength of our plank. 
You can always put your knees on the mat. You're gonna tuck your elbows in and lower all the way down to your belly. Three cobras to warm up our back. Untuck your toes, lift your heart on one. Chin gently drops. Exhale, lower your forehead. Lift up on two, press the tops of your feet down, lift your kneecaps up. Exhale, lower, here's your third one. Maybe you come up a little higher, hands pull back, heart pulls forward. Exhale, release, child's pose. Sink those hips back against the heels. Now you may stay here for a breath or two or you can pop right up into your down dog, getting back to home base. And then come back to your breathing. Come back to the feeling of being grounded against the earth. The hands and the feet are active. Inhale to look forward. Wait for that exhale to walk or jump top of your mat and end in a forward fold. Halfway lift, lengthen your spine, breathe in. Forward fold and breathe out. Come all the way up to standing. Urdhva Hastasana, reach up. We're going to flow two more. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands to the mat, step your feet back, tuck your elbows in, lower halfway or all the way down. Cobra or up dog, so I'll do cobra, you've got up dog over there. And then down dog or child's pose. And again, we meet in down dog. So you'll see that there's lots of options, lots of different ways you can move to create this uh, practice that will really work in your body. Let's go one more together. Wait for that inhale so you can gaze forward. Your exhale jumps or steps your feet to the top of your mat. Nice, forward fold, and then halfway lift, new breath in, fold and let it go, all the way up to standing, big breath in, let's go for a third round, fold, halfway lift, high to low push up, choose your variation, no judgment, moving and breathing for what works for you, child or down dog, exhale. Full breath in, full breath out. Let's walk the hands back to the feet, back of your mat. Let's move into a deep forward fold. So that might be peace fingers in between big toe, second toe. That might be standing on your hands for gorilla pose. Or maybe you're more comfortable coming back to ragdoll. But allowing yourself to deepen even more into those hamstrings. The knees are soft no matter how open your hamstrings are. Lifting the sits bones up engaging the front of your leg. Drop the head and breathe. Good, release your hands. Walk your hands forward to your plank and then lower your right forearm and then your left forearm to the mat. Little bit of heat here in our forearm plank. Press the arms down, the backs, the hands, the forearms, the elbows grounding down, lifting your heart up, the pit of your belly up, and even your hamstrings up. So you're lengthening and engaging. This is your last five. Stay with it and breathe. Four. Three. Two. Now walk your feet forward for dolphin pose, even more into those hamstrings. Press your forearms down and forward. Lift your hips up and back. Your feet can be as close to you as you want, but essentially downward facing dog on your forearm. Keep pressing your chest through your arm. Last three. Two, and then walk your feet back to your forearm plank, and then lower your hips, your belly down to the mat for Sphinx pose. So you may need to adjust a little bit. Elbows under your shoulders, drag your forearms back, lengthen your heart forward. Drop the legs heavy, drop the tailbone heavy. Breathe for three, two, and soften down to your belly. Just slide the hands back to your rib cage, press back to child's pose, and press back to downward facing dog. Again, maybe you need an extra moment in child's pose, and that's perfect. But when you're ready, return to the downward facing dog, full breath in and full breath out. And then let your right leg go high, big breath in. Exhale your knee to your nose, pull your shoulders forward. Lift that leg back up. Over to your right arm, exhale. Lift it back up. And then under to your left arm. Make sure your shoulders are coming all the way forward. Good, lift it up, warrior one. Right foot behind right wrist or right on the inside of the hand. Drop the back heel and rise up. 
Good, so you've got a 45 degree angle in that back foot and then front foot pointing to the top of your mat, sinking nice and low in the right thigh. Little glide of the right hip back, left hip forward. Maybe you start to lift your focus up to your hands or stay looking straight ahead, but lock in your focus point. Calling it our Dristi in yoga. Change to warrior two. Adjust those legs, widen your feet if you need to. Press the right thigh out to the right and get low into your leg. Breathing here for three. Two. Straighten your legs, reach your arms up. Turn all 10 toes to the left and take a wide forward fold all the way over your leg. Drop the head at the bottom. Make sure all the weight isn't in your heels. Check in with the weight. Fold and deepen. So although our head is relaxed and we're dropping to the earth, glide your shoulder blades up your back. Exactly. Nice big breath in. Turn your right toes forward. Exhale. Walk your hands to the top of your mat. Soften your left knee down to the earth. Bring your right leg back to a modified side plank. So slide that right leg back. Exactly. And you may need to adjust your left knee forward a little bit. And you can take this to any shape you want. You can keep your foot on the floor or you can lift your leg up. Breathe three. Two, lower your hand to the mat and choose your flow. Your flow might be a down dog, child pose, hold a plank, or you move through your entire vinyasa. In through the nose, regroup out through your neck. Left leg is going high, nice big inhale. Same thing on the left, knee to nose, shoulders forward, heart lifted. Lift it back up. To your left arm, Exhale, lift it back up under to your right arm. Exhale, lift it up and then step your left foot forward, warrior one. Drop the back heel at a 45 degree angle and lift up. Take that moment to sink to ground. And then the availability of maybe lifting your focus or stretching your arms up a little higher, challenging your balance even more. Change to warrior two, open arms, open legs. Make sure your right pinky toe is parallel to the back of your mat, low in your left thigh. Extend the arms out in opposition and look over your middle front finger. Stand all the way up, turn your toes to the right and wide forward fold, all the way back down. Now you may need to bring your feet closer together or further apart. Those are little adjustments you can make again on your own with whatever is going to serve your legs, hamstrings. Turning your left toes to the top of your mat. Walk your hands around your right foot and then soften your right knee down, stepping your left foot back to a side plank. Good. Again, taking your variation, it can all, everybody can look different, right? Still being in a side plank, create the shape that's going to work for you. Last three, two, and then put that hand down and choose your flow. Maybe you leave your knees down, cobra or up dog, child or downward facing dog. Breath in, two, breath out. Inhale to look to the top of your mat. Exhale to walk or jump. Travel forward. Halfway lift. Breathe in. Forward fold. Breathe out. Come all the way up to standing. Big breath in. And let's sit back into chair pose. So you can have your feet together or you can have your feet apart. And then just know your knees are doing the same thing your feet are doing, right? So if your feet are together, your knees are together. Sing nice and low into the hips. Reach through your fingertips. We're going to start to find a bit of a flow. So I want you to sweep the hands of the mat and back. And then sweep and stand all the way up with straight legs. Again, exhale, you're going to sweep and reach back. Sweep and stand all the way up. Let's go for two more. How low can you go in those hips while keeping your core engaged? One more. Stand all the way up. Beautiful, guys. Forward fold. Dive back over your legs. Halfway lift. Slow it back. Down your facing dog. You guys know you can just simply step and that's enough. Or you take your full flow. Walk your hands back to your feet again. Halfway lift and breathe in. 
forward fold and breathe out heel toe your feet apart a little bit wider bend your right knee right hand down and lift your left arm high twist open stay and breathe sinking into that left hip for a three two and forward fold over your legs on one changing side bend your left knee left hand down right arm up Pull that right hip back, make your right side really long. Three, two, and forward fold. Nice, heel toe the feet back towards each other. Halfway lift, breathe in. Forward fold, breathe out. Walk your hands forward to your plank and press right back down or facing dog and we're gonna start right side again. Right leg goes high, breathe in. Adding on, knee to nose, exhale. Inhale, lift the leg. Knee to right arm, exhale. Lift the leg, breathe in to your left arm, breathe out. Lift the leg, warrior one, back to where you left off, drop the back heel, rise up, we're not here as long. Change to warrior two, open arms, open legs. All the way up to standing toes, turn left, one big forward fold over your leg. Turn your right toes to the top of your mat and walk your hands forward. This time up into a high crescent lunge. Right, so sweep those arms up. If you need to put your back knee down, that's a great option to find a little bit of modification here. Otherwise, you are high on that back leg, high on the ball of your left foot, sinking down into those legs. Then I want you to twist, left arm forward, right arm back. I know, I got you, surprise, <laughs> chain. Good, keep this twist, lower your left hand right next to your right foot, so on the mat, exactly. Now, either lower your left knee or drop your left pinky toe down to step back into your side plank from here. So I'll let her do that version. I'm going to lower my left knee, and here we are all in our side plank again. Taking your variation, lifting your bottom hip up. Three, two, and again, you flow out of that big exhale. Through your up dog or cobra, and back to your downward facing dog. Nice, guys. Breathe in. Breathe out, so let's do it on the left side. Left leg goes high, full breath in. Knee to nose, exhale, working that core and those arms, lift. Over to your left, lift. Second time through, can you lift the knee up a little higher? Nice, left foot behind left wrist, warrior one. Drop the feet and lift the chest. Change it to warrior two. Straighten the front leg, turn the toes to the right, and you fold. Walking those hands to the top of your mat, left toes turn forward, back heel lifts up, or the back knee comes down as you rise up to the top. Take a moment to land, since we haven't been here yet, use this time to feel the stretch on the front of the right hip, to feel the work in the left leg, and then the ease that you can accept in the upper body and in your breath. Twist, right arm forward, left arm back. Right, really pulling those arms in opposition keeping your twister to lower your right hand down to the mat and then take your version whether the knee comes down or you step the right the put the right pinky toe down and step your left foot back is up to you we hold for three two and again you flow out of that on one with your breath exhale good work Take one more around the breath here. And then you're gonna walk or jump to the top of your mat for crow or yogi squat. So you can either jump wide and land in your squat, elbows press out, knees hug in, heart is open. Or you're gonna plant your hands, feet together, knees apart, leaning forward, getting one foot at a time to float. If that's successful, then maybe two feet. Okay, so looking past your fingertips, lifting up through your core and finding a balance in crow, or nice and open in your yogi squat. We're here for three, two, and everybody forward fold. Plant your feet, lift your hips, bring those feet back towards each other, and let's roll up through the spine one vertebrae at a time. At the top, reach those arms up. Let's move into eagle. Right arm under, right leg over. Guard us in the eagle. So these right toes can touch down on the floor for a bit of a kickstand. Or you can try to wrap the toes around the back of the ankle or just hug it into the side of the leg. The elbows will try to lift, the hands will pull away from the face or you grab opposite shoulders. Take a moment to land and breathe. 
Eyes are focused right through your arms. Good, you're gonna let your arms go and reach up overhead. Pull the right thigh up into your chest. Now you can stay right here, high march, or you can grab the front of your shin. Now slip your left hand to the outside edge of your right knee pit and sweep your right arm back and twist. Can you stand any taller? Three. Two, come back up through center. Place the right foot at your inner thigh. I know, we're gonna keep going. <laughs> I know, we're not, we're not there yet. One more, tree pose. You can keep your hands at heart center. You can reach the arms up. Take a moment just here for four more rounds. Three, two, and lower the right foot. Nice work. All right, sit back into that chair pose. Let's change sides. Left arm under, left leg over. Eagle, guard asana. Remember, you can also be grabbing shoulders. That left foot can be a kickstand, get low, lift the elbows, pull the hands away from the face. The focus is strong, the breath is steady. This is your three, two, release the arms on one, lift the left thigh up high march. Now remember that seated position in the beginning, we had this sense of grounding and pushing down, but also a length and a lift up. You need to feel that here for your balance. Right hand slips into the outer left knee pit and you sweep your left arm back. Push the foot down, lift up through the crown of your head. Don't worry about falling out, just get right back in for three. Two, bring it up through center, place that left foot at your inner thigh. Just make sure the foot is above or below the knee that we're not pushing into our knee joint. Land wherever this is, make up your own tree pose. Let it be beautiful, feel your breath. Three, moment of gratitude. Two, and bring that left foot back down. Nice work guys, two feet to the mat top. Stand up nice and tall, big breath in. Forward fold, dive back over your legs. Halfway lift, breathe in. Hands on the mat, exhale, flow your way back down or facing dog. Remember, a step is good. You can hold a plank and work that straight. Eventually, down or facing dog. Lifting your right leg high. Bend your knee, open your hip, pull your toes to the left. Now you might stay right here and look under your left armpit. Make sure your right shoulder is heavy. Or you can flip over. Let the weight of your right foot fall to the left and take your flip. Exactly, so you've got flip dog or wild thing or you're right here where I am, just stretching and opening that hip. We're here for three, push those feet down, lift up for two. Everybody straighten the right leg and come back over on one. Nice, right foot steps all the way forward, warrior two. Drop your back heel and rise up. Nice, straighten the front leg, triangle pose. Kick the hips back, reach for trikonasana, right hand down to the shin or to a block or the floor, whatever's available, and left arm high to the sky. Ground your feet, lengthen and breathe. All right, so you're welcome to stay right here. We're gonna have a little fun. We're gonna float, we're gonna bend your knee, reach your right hand forward and push off into Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon. So the right hand is on the mat in front of your right foot into the outer pinky toe side. The left pinky toe is lifting up. This hand may be on the hip. Again, you may fall out and get back in. Last three. We're all landing back in warrior two in two. And float yourself back. If you're in triangle, join us in warrior two. And cartwheel your hands to the mat on the inside edge of your right foot and heel toe that right foot out of the way. Sink that left knee down, open up into a runner's lunge. You can have your heart open. You can lower your forearms down. And in a moment, we'll pull back into half splits. But give that left hip a chance to open up. You may also feel it in the right hip as you let the knee fall open a little to the right. Important thing is that the knee is on top of the ankle, so take a peek over, make sure that your knee hasn't bypassed your toes. Good, let's pull it back, half split. So walk your hands back, you can heel toe your right foot back to the middle of your mat if that's available. Flex the toes, lengthen your heart. If you've got full splits and you wanna slide all the way down, feel free to take that variation. Maybe you're in half splits and you're working on getting your forearms to the mat, really going low. Leanne, full splits has been my yes, quarantine girl. goal. Look at you go! <laughs> That's amazing! Working on it. That's awesome. That's so good. 
Yeah, I said this this morning as well. I keep saying it in class. It's like, this is practice. And especially in quarantine, you have the time to just get on your mat and practice. Like nothing happens overnight. Um, so you have to keep working on it. You have to keep practicing. So you're so close. I'm trying. I love it. <laughs> All right, guys, back to your downer facing dog. Fun part's getting out I of the uh, split. So ignore her for a <laughs> moment. Cute, not cute. <laughs> back to your downer facing dog. So good. Take that nice breath in. Nice big breath out. And let's get it on the left side. Left leg lifts. Bend the knee. Open the hip. Again, you can stay looking into your right arm or you flip when you're ready. The weight of your left foot falls to the right. You catch yourself. And then the shoulder moves on top of the wrist. The feet dig down. The heart lifts up for three, two. And we all return back to center with the left leg straight. Step your foot between your hands. Warrior two, drop that back heel. We've already been here once and we're only here for a moment. Straighten your left leg, kick your hips back, and reach it forward. Left hand down to shin, the mat, a block, right arm high. Make sure those hips come underneath of you. It can be really tempting here to kind of pop the butt out, so pop it back under. And then also knit the front of your rib cage together. It can also go a little wild, so pull it back in. Remember, you can stay here the whole time. Otherwise, I would look down, bend both knees, give a good push, reach out into the left as you lift the right leg up. Perfect. Now, you can look down. That really helps with stability. You can challenge yourself by looking over to the right or up to the sky, which is going to make it even harder. We wobble, we fall out, we get back in. We notice the difference between right and left side. Three, two, big step back, bend the left knee, land. Everybody back up. Beautiful guys, carve the hands inside of your left foot. Heel toe that foot out of the way, just move it over. Sink the back knee, and you fold. Giving yourself that moment of stillness after all of our flowing, to just kind of land back with your breath, to acknowledge, to really feel what's happening in your hips. And then when you're ready, you can pull it back into your half or full split. So Ardha Hanumanasana or Hanumanasana, monkey god. You're gonna pull those toes back, flex your foot. Again, heart's gonna lengthen. You can stay in this half split with your hips on top of your knee or nice and good over there, <laughs> taking your full split. So again, you can take your full splits even if you're not all the way down. That's the whole point, right? We don't wait until well, I can't do it. It's like, no, you can do it. There are lots of different ways to get there to make it available to you, and you just keep working. Big breath in. Full breath out. Let's get one more. Inhale and exhale, and then again, your journey out and back to downward facing dog. Nice. <laughs> Not easy. <laughs> back you go. All right, so into our half pigeon on the right side, right knee behind right wrist, shin to the top of your mat, sinking down into that left leg. So you can be here in hit pigeon pose. You can stay upright or you can fold right away, letting your forehead rest on something, right? So so you've got it down on the earth. You can also have it on your fist, on a pillow. Um, if this bothers hips, knees, joints, be uh, available to lay on your back, crossing your right ankle over your left and to pull it into a figure four stretch. So we really wanna allow those hips to open up. Doesn't matter what posture you're in to allow that to happen. But we're just looking for some time and space here to surrender and to open those hips. Turn to your breath instead of your, th instead of your thoughts. Can you breathe into that hip just a little bit deeper? Notice if you're holding back from gravity and from your weight and just take a moment to let it go just a little bit more.
bring your chest back up. You're going to turn to the left long edge side of your mat. You're going to tuck this right foot into your inner thigh. Sweep your arms up, nice big inhale, and you're going to twist to the right, so toward your bent leg. Twisting around your spine, sitting up tall. And then leave your left hand on that outer right thigh and sweep your right arm up and over. So nice big side stretch. It's going to keep your right hip grounded. Now if it's available to you to grab that right big toe, let that be an option. And then pick it all the way back up through center, plant the hands and step back, downward facing dog. If you want to flow, that option is always there for you to kind of reset, or you can stay in down dog, taking a moment to breathe. And when you're ready, left side, left knee behind left wrist, shin to the top of your mat. Sink down into those hips, settle in. All right, this starts a bit of our surrender series, right? Opening up into our hips and seeing how our breath can help us drop down a little bit more. So in the beginning, in our flow, the breath helps to keep us in the present moment with all the movement and the connection of our body. And now we keep that connection to our body, but we layer on the, the availability of letting go and going a little bit deeper. more rounds of breath to see if you can deepen just that little bit more whether you're on your back or in pigeon and gently come up through center turning to your right of the long edge side of your mat right side left foot at your inner thigh Arms sweep up when you're ready and twist it up to the left. So bring that right hand on the outer edge of the leg to help you twist and your left hand behind your back to lengthen. And then leave your right hand where it is on that leg and sweep your left arm up and over. It really forces you into a deep side bend, keeping the left side grounded, your left hip opening. Again, you always have that option to look down or up. Take care of your neck. Breathe for three, two, and bring it back up to the top. Nice. Hands to the top of your mat, back to your downward facing dog. And this time, shift it forward to a nice high plank with or without the help of your knees. Lower all the way down to your belly the same way we began. Right into a locust pose. Arms are going to sweep back behind you. Option to interlace your hands or not, right? Great options, both are. And then roll the shoulders back, lift your heart and lift your leg. Now the pit of the belly is trying to lift up towards the spine, support your low back. The chin is just gently tucked so that the back of the neck is wrinkle free. Lift the hamstrings up, lift your arms up, hold for five. Turn to your breath and lengthen more. Feel the crown of your head reaching forward. Feel your toes lengthening back. Last three, two, and right cheek to the mat. Drop your arms and drop your legs. If it feels good, you can bend your knees and let your feet rock from side to side like windshield wipers behind you. And then turn your left cheek to the mat, change side. Bring the hands by the sides of the wrists and press back child pose. Swing your legs around to the front of the mat when you're ready and lay onto your back. So a little bit of core on our back. We're gonna start with penguin crunches. Your feet are hip distance apart, arms are down by your side. You're gonna lift your head, neck and shoulders up and look between your legs. And then pull right hand to right ankle and left hand past left ankle. And keep going, little movements from side to side. Are we You've doing got penguin crunches ten. for the 20 Yes, penguins? how do you know? <laughs> Seven for all of the amazing penguins. Last five. Four, three, two, one. Good, really stretch it out. And 
And then let's leave ourselves long on our mat. You can actually send your feet out a little bit wider to the corners. Flex the feet, reach down towards your feet, lift your head, neck, and shoulders, and we crunch for 10 little pulses. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Keep going. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, keep going, two, keep going, last, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one, and let it go. All right. And then when you're ready, plant your feet hip distance apart, press down, and lift up into your bridge or full wheel. Yeah, so lift up into your variation that's going to serve you. Here's your bridge pose. Lots of different options for your arms, right? So you can bend those elbows into row, what I call robot arm. You can interlace your hands under your back. Or maybe you're in full wheel. Lengthening, lifting up onto your hands and feet. Breathe for three. This is the first round of two. And gently lower those hips down. So second round, you can come up into full wheel or take bridge pose again. When you're ready, plant the feet and lift up. If you're in full wheel, press your heart through your arms. Maybe the heels lift off the mat to create more space for your low back. Breathe deeply, whether you're in bridge or full wheel, up for five, four, three, two, and down we all come onto the spine. Let's go soles of the feet together, knees apart, or the opposite, feet out, knees in. You can have one hand to your heart, one hand to your stomach, or opposite arms over, or grabbing opposite elbows overhead. And just take a moment to close the eyes. Let your spine realign after everything we've done. towards your supine twist. Knees are going to rock over to the left. You can scoot your left hip underneath of you as you send your arms out to a T, looking to the right or up to the sky. You can use that left hand on your thigh or you can place it on the mat. Let go of any extra work or energy that you don't need here. Change sides, knees go to the right. You look to the left or up to the sky, shifting those hips. It's always a bonus when you get a little crack or pop. through center for your inversion of choice. You can be in waterfall, feet straight up. You can be up into a shoulder stand or plow pose. So choose where you need to be. Also handstand, headstand is an option. So I'm gonna head into plow. I'm gonna do headstand. Great, love <laughs> it. So you've got all your options here to move into, to find your breathing. And again, it's just a way to focus on you and what your body needs in this practice, in this moment. If you're in headstand or handstand, take that moment in child. If you're in shoulder stand or waterfall, you may join me where I am in plow pose. But eventually we'll all roll down through the spine or swing our, onto our backs into our final posture, which is Shavasana. So feet down to the bottom corners of your mat. Flip those palms up if it's comfortable for you and let your eyes close. Take a moment to really feel the back of your body connecting to the earth. Relax the muscles around the eyes and around the mouth. Take a full breath in. And exhale, surrender.
a nice full deep breath into your nose. Exhale, let it go. One more time into your nose, maybe out through your mouth, cleansing yourself with any stale air, stale thoughts. And you can wiggle your fingers and toes, starting to bring life back into your body. Small, simple movements, the eyes can stay closed. Reaching the arms overhead for a nice big morning stretch. Lengthen. And then roll over to the right side of your body into a comfortable fetal position, supporting your head and neck with your arm or hand. Pressing your left hand into the mat, feel yourself up to a seat. Returning to our seat where we began, hands at heart center. Taking that moment to land back on your intention of gratitude. Thankful that you found this time to step onto your mat. Bring your thumbs to your third eye center, point between the eyebrows for kind thoughts. Thumbs to your lips for kind words. And thumbs to heart center, honoring your practice. Together we bow forward and say namaste. namaste. Big thank you to Toy on the Bee. Thanks to Gam. Yeah. And hope you all enjoyed yoga with art at home. <laughs> and um, keep practicing, stay active. And everyone here at 21 C can't wait to welcome you back into our spaces as soon as we are able. So have a great weekend. <laughs>